Welcome to this section. In this section, we'll be looking at some soft examples on stoichiometry. Example 1. How many grams of hydrogen bromide would be required to react with 2 grams of propyne? We we'll have C to be 12 molecular mass, hydrogen is 1, bromine is 18. So solution. This is the formula for propane. C, C, triple bond C, H. Reacting with two moles of hydrogen bromide to give dibromopropene. That is, it has two bromine. So from this, you can see that you can calculate the molecular mass of propyne and that of hydrogen bromide. For propyne, propyne has three carbon atoms, so three times twelve thirty six plus four hydrogen atoms, so four times one. 4, 36 plus 4, 40. So the molecular mass of propyne is 40 grams. Then for hydrogen bromide, molecular mass of, atomic mass of bromine is 80. And that of hydrogen is 1. So hydrogen bromide is 80 plus 1, 81. Since two molecules, two moles of hydrogen bromide reacted, so we have 2 times 81. And that is why we have 162 here. So that means 40 grams of propyne requires 162 grams of hydrogen bromide. So we are now consigned or we want to find how many grams of propyne and hydrogen bromide that 2 grams of propyne will require. So 40 is the 162. 2 grams will be how many? Say why. Cross multiply. Y is equal to 2 times 162 all over 40. When you multiply and divide through, you have your answer as 8.1 gram. So 8.1 gram of hydrogen bromide will be required to react with 2 grams of propyne. Example 2. How many moles of limestone will be required to produce 5.6 gram of calcium oxide? So the first step is to write the equation of the reaction. So we have calcium ox calcium trisocarbonate 5, which is limestone, CaCO3, will decompose to give you calcium oxide and carbon 4 oxide. So we're not concerned with the carbon 4 oxide now. In this question, we are concerned with limestone, CaCO3, and calcium oxide, that's CaO. So we want to know how many moles of limestone that will be required to produce 5.6 grams of calcium. But from the reaction, equation reaction, we have that one mole of one mole of CaCO3 give you one mole of give one mole of CaO. That's calcium oxide. So we we'll now find the relative molecular mass of these two compounds. For calcium trisocarbonate 5, calcium atomic mass of calcium is 40, carbon is 12, and oxygen is 16. So when you calculate it, 40 times 1 plus 12 times 1 plus 16 times 3 because there are 3 atoms of oxygen. So you have 40 plus 12 plus 48. When you sum it up, it will be equal to 100. So the relative molecular mass of CaCO3 is 100. Therefore, CaO, calcium is 40, oxygen is 16. 40 plus 16 is 56. So you have that 100 grams of CaCO3 gave you 56 grams of calcium oxide, that's CaO. 5.6 grams. 5.6 gram of CaO will be produced by, oh, the answer is already here, but when you cross multiply, you have, take this for, to be x, x is equal to 5.6 times 100, all over 56, 56 here 1, yeah, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 times 100 is equal to 10, so the answer was there already. So that means 10 
grams of limestone is required to produce 5.6 grams of calcium oxide. But you know that one mole is equal to mass in gram over relative molecular mass. So to get a number of moles in 10 grams of limestone, you have to divide 10 over the relative molecular mass of limestone, which is 100. And when you do so, you have your answer as 0 0.1 mole. So that is to say that 0 0.1 mole of CaCO3 will be required to produce 5.6 gram of CaO. From the above, you may be required to calculate the volume of carbon four oxide produced during the reaction. The Volume of any gas at HTP is equal to 22.4 dmq. So to find the volume of carbon oxide produced, you have CaO, the equation of the reaction CaO to give you Ca CaCO3 react decomposes to give CaO plus carbon four oxide. That is said that one mole of calcium trisocarbonate 4, that's limestone, formed one mole of carbon 4 oxide. And one mole of any gas at STP, the volume is 22.4 dm cube. So that means that one mole of limestone gives 22.4 dm cube of CaO, sorry, of carbon 4 oxide. Therefore, 0 0.1 mole of limestone will give how many volumes of carbon four oxide. Let us call the volume of carbon four oxide to be given x. When you cross multiply to find x, x is equal to 0 0.1 mole times 2.4 dm cube all over one mole. The unit mole will cancel mole and you are left with 0 0.1 times 2.4 dm cube which is equal to 2.24 dm cube. So X, which is the volume of carbon oxide produced by 0 0.1 mole of calcium trisocarbonate 4 is 2.24 dm cube. Example 3, what is the molar mass of a substance if 0 0.4 mole of the substance has a mass of 25.0 gram? Stating the relationship between mole mass and molar mass, we have that mole is equal to mass in gram all over molar mass. So molar mass will now be equal to mass in gram over moles or mole. Molar mass therefore is equal to 25.0 gram all over 0 0.4 mole which is equal to 62.5 gram per mole. Four. What is the volume of oxygen that will remain after reacting 8 cm cube of hydrogen with 20 cm cube of oxygen? So the first step is to write and balance the chemical equation of the reaction. You have 2H2 plus O2 to give you 2H2O, meaning that 2 moles of hydrogen reacts with 1 mole of oxygen to give 2 moles of water. Water molecules, so we have 8 cm cube of hydrogen requires 4 cm cube of oxygen to give you 8 cm cube of water. So in the case of or 40 cm cube of hydrogen will react with 20 cm cube of oxygen to give you 40 cm cube of water. So in this case, any volume of hydrogen you use, you divide it by 2 to get the volume of oxygen you will use. That is what this whole 40 cm cube, 20 cm cube is all about. If you are using 10 cm cube for hydrogen, that means you will use, divided by 2, 5 cm cube of oxygen to get back 10 cm cube of water molecules. So that is to say that since we are giving 8 cm cube to react with 20 cm cube of oxygen, 
you can already see that the 20 cm cube of oxygen, that oxygen is in excess. Because 8 cm cube will only react with 8 divided by 4, which is 4 cm cube of oxygen. But since we have 20, the gas in excess is oxygen, and it is in excess by 20 minus 4, 16 cm cube. So 16 cm cube is in excess because only 4 cm cube will take part in the reaction. Just do magic to conclude that any volume of hydrogen you use, you divide it by 2 to get the volume of oxygen. No, we say that because of the ratio of the moles. It doesn't apply in every reaction. But in this case, 2 moles of hydrogen requires 1 mole of oxygen. So their ratio is 2 is to 1. And that is what you will use to find how many moles of to find the how many moles of oxygen you will use if you're already using so so amounts of hydrogen. So you work with the ratio of the moles. Example 5. A compound contains 31.91% of potassium, 28.93% of chlorine, and the rest is then the rest oxygen. What is the chemical formula of the compound? The first step is to calculate the percentage of oxygen present. We are told that potassium is at 1.91, chlorine is 28.93, and the rest is oxygen. That means, since it's a percentage, the highest percent you can get is 100. So that means our percentage of oxygen is now equal to 100 minus the sum of the percentages of potassium and chlorine. And that is 100 minus 31.91 plus 28.93. When you add and then subtract, you have the percentage of oxygen to be 39.16%. So let's now go over to calculate the formula. On your table, you have potassium in one column, chlorine, one column, and oxygen in another column. And then you have Percentage masses of elements. Potassium is at 1.9, chlorine 28.93, and oxygen 39.16. Atomic masses of the elements 39 for chlorine, 35.5, sorry, 39 for potassium, 35.5 for chlorine, and 16 for oxygen. We now find the ratio of the percentage of the elements to the atomic mass. That's a percentage of element over atomic mass. For potassium, it is 31.91 over 39, which is equal to 0.82. For chlorine, it's 28.93 over 35.5, which is equal to 0.81. And for oxygen, it is 39.16 all over 16, which is equal to 2.45. The next step is to divide using the smallest ratio. So the division with the smallest value or answer is used to divide all others. In this case, the smallest is that of chlorine with 0 0.81. So you divide 0 0.82 by 0 0.81, which is approximately equal to 1. For chlorine, 0 0.81 over 0 0.81 is 1. And then for oxygen, 2.85, sorry, 2.45 over 0 0.81. Is equal to 3.0 so now we've seen potassium is equal to 1 chlorine is equal to 1 and oxygen is equal to 3 therefore the formula is KClO3 KClO3 potassium trichloride example 6 how many atoms are present in 6.0 gram of magnesium magnesium atomic atomic Number is 24. Sorry, atomic mass is 24. And then the Avogadro number is 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23 mole per 23 per mole. One mole of every substance contains 6.2 times 10 raised to the power 23 atoms. And one mole of magnesium is 24 grams. And it contains 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23 atoms. 6 grams of magnesium will contain Y, and Y is equal to 
6 times 0 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23 all over 24. y is equal to 1.51 times 10 raised to the power 23 atoms. So the number of atoms in 6.0 grams of magnesium is 1.51 times 10 raised to the power 23 atoms. An organic compound contains 40% carbon, 6.67% hydrogen, and the rest oxygen. Calculate the empirical formula. If the relative molecular mass is 180, that's the relative molecular mass of the compound, and then determine the molecular formula. Okay, the first step as we did before is to find the percentage of oxygen. And it is equal to 100 minus 40 plus 6.67, which is equal to 53.33%. So just like we did before, calcium, carbon in one column, hydrogen in one column, and then oxygen. Percentage mass of elements is 46.67 for hydrogen and 53.33 for oxygen. The atomic mass is carbon 12, hydrogen 1, oxygen 16. Ratio of atomic percentage mass of atomic mass for carbon is 40 over 12, which is equal to 3.3. For hydrogen, it is 6.67 over 1, which is equal to 6.67. Oxygen, it is 53.33 over 16, which is equal to 3.33. Dividing by the smallest ratio, we have 3.33 over 3.33 equal to 1. 6.67 over 3.33 is 2 and then approximately 2 and then oxygen 3.33 over 3.33 it is 1 so we see that carbon is 1 hydrogen is 2 and oxygen is 1 so the empirical formula is CH2O to now calculate the molecular formula empirical formula N is equal to relative molecular mass So we have that CH2OM is equal to 180. Empirical formula N, see the subscript N, is equal to relative molecular mass. And the relative molecular mass is 180. So CH2N, that's brackets N, is equal to 180. 12 times 1 plus 1 times 2 plus 16 times 1. We are trying to calculate the masses of the elements. Carbon is 12 and it is 1. So 12 times 1 plus hydrogen is 2. Is well, Atomic mass is 1 and it is 2 in the formula. So we have 1 times 2 plus oxygen is, has an atomic mass of 16 and it is 1 in the formula. So we have 16 times 1. When you multiply through and you sum up all in brackets n, you have 12 plus 2 plus 16 and it is equal to 30. Therefore, 30 N is equal to 180. N is equal to 180 over 30. N is equal to 6. So the molecular formula is CH2O bracket 6. Or when you open up the bracket with the 6, you have C6H12. O6. That is, you multiply each atom with 6. Because they already have 1. So for calcium, they already has 1. 1 times 6 is 6. C6. Six, six. Hydrogen has 2. 2 times 6 is 12. So H12. Oxygen has 1. 1 times 6 is 6. That's why we have O6. So hence, the empirical formula is CH2O. And the molecular formula is C6H12O6. And this is the formula of the compound glucose. Example 8. The number of atoms of chlorine present in 5.8 gram of sodium chloride is what? Sodium chloride atomic mass is 23 and that of chlorine is 35.5. 35.5. Then Apagodio's number is 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23. Solution. Calculate the molecular mass of NaCl, that is sodium chloride. To calculate that, we have 23 times 1 plus 35.5 times 1. When you 
add up, you have 58.5 as the molecular mass of NaCl. And if one mole of NaCl contains one mole of one mole of NaCl contains one mole of sodium, that's Na, and one mole of chlorine. Also, one mole of sodium chloride or NaCl is equal to 58.5 grams. The number of moles present in 5.85 grams is 5.85 all over 58.5. Remember the formula mole is equal to mass in gram mass in gram over molar mass. So we are now looking for mole and mole is equal to 5.85 which is the mass in gram all over 58.5 which is the molar mass. So and when you divide you have your answer to be 0 0.1 mole. So 0 0.1 mole one mole is present in 5.85 gram of sodium chloride. Hence, the number of atoms of chlorine is 0 0.1 times 6.02 times 10 raised to power 23. And it is equal to 6.02 times 10 raised to power 23. So this is the amount of chlorine in 5.85 gram of sodium chloride. Example 9, 16.8 gram of sodium hydrogen triazocarbonate 4 is completely decomposed by heat. Calculate the volume of carbon dioxide given off at STP. So to solve this solution, you first write down the bal and balance the chemical equation for the reaction. NaHCO3, that's the sodium hydrogen triazocarbonate 4, decomposes to give you sodium carbonate, sodium triazocarbonate, Na2CO3 plus H2O plus CO2. This 5 is S, not 5. Solid. S, not 5. So we have that 2 moles of NaHCO3, also solid. Don't mind the 5. So from the equation, 2 moles of NaHCO3 produces 1 mole of CO2. And 1 mole of CO2 is equal to 22.4 dm cubed. That is 1 mole of carbon dioxide at STP is equal to 22.4 dm cubed. The molar mass of NaHCO3 is 84. Hence, 2 moles will be 2 times 84, which is equal to 168. That is, therefore, 168 grams of Na sodium, sodium hydrogen triazocarbonate 4 gave you 22.4 dm cube of carbon dioxide. 16.8 grams of sodium hydrogen triazocarbonate 4 will give what volume of carbon dioxide at STP? So let's call the volume of carbon dioxide that will be produced by 16.8 gram of, grams of sodium hydrogen triazocarbonate 4 at STP y. So y is equal to 16.8 times 22.4 all over 168. And answer is 2.24 dm3. So 2.24 dm3 of carbon dioxide will be produced at STP by 16.8 gram of sodium hydrogen trioxocarbonate 4. Example 10. The volume of 2.5 moles of oxygen at STP is 1 mole of oxygen at STP is 22.24 dm3. 2.5 moles of oxygen at STP will be how many? Let us call it x. Okay, so x is equal to 22.4 dm3 times 2.5 moles all over 1 mole. Simply cross multiplying this, this times this over this will give you this. So we have x to be equal to 56.0 dm3. So the volume of gas produced by 2.5 moles of oxygen at STP is 56.0 dm3. With that last example, we've come to the end of this section. 
We'll now take a look at what we've done so far. We'll start out with stoichiometry, with its definition, and it's, we say that it is the relation between the quantities of substances that take part in a reaction or form a compound, and that elements combine to assume stable duplet and octet states. Different laws are used to express chemical combinations, and they include the law of conservation of mass, which states that matter can neither be created nor destroyed during a chemical reaction. Law of definite proportion states that all pure samples of a particular chemical compound contain similar elements combined in the same proportion by mass. Law of multiple proportion states that if two elements A and B combine to form more than one chemical compound, the various masses of one element A, which combine separately with a fixed mass of the other element B, are in simple multiple ratio. And we have some examples. Stated Gay-Lussac's law. As okay, it states that when gases react, they do so in volumes which are in simple ratios to one another and to the volumes of the product. If gases, provided that temperature and pressure remain constant. Avogadro's law states that equal volume of all gases at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules. Or moles. One mole of any gas at STP, remember, is equal to 22.4 dm cube in volume. Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 raised to power 23. And one mole of a substance contains 6.02 times 10 raised to power 23 number of atoms. Formula for mole is mass in gram over molar mass or relative molecular mass. And the number of moles of a substance is equal to the number of particles all over the all over the Avogadro number, which is 6.02 times 10 raised to power 23. And with that, we come to the end of this section and to the end of this topic. Thank you.